all four human beings in nightlife culture, nightlife industry, we have to kind of spread the blame or spread the ha-has or spread the LOLs or spread the pointing and the ridicule, you know, evenly, right? Let's give it to everybody. And this is one of the topics we have to give it to everybody because this story is absolutely balmy. And this is courtesy of The Guardian. It says, British DJ escapes prosecution after sparking New, <laughs> New Zealand's first Omicron scare. If ever there was an indication that DJs, especially during the pandemic, have excessively or I think um, grossly overestimated how important they are to society. And they've kind of made it their mission to remind people that, you know, even though we, you and I can't work, they have to work despite them making 10 times as much as we do on a monthly, sometimes on a giggly basis. Giggly, is that make five cents? I don't know. Whatever, you know what I mean. On a gig basis, right? These guys make, you know, 10 grand, five grand, maybe more. Um, and they're still the ones who are pushing to go and play in all types of places, third world countries that are on fire. And, you know, just whatever, just bringing their merry band of fucking people twirling their hands in the air, wearing fedoras and girls fucking dancing in fucking hoops. Hoops. I mean, it's just stupid. Um, but yeah, this is quite crazy. Rufford Etheridge, aka DJ Dimension, apologizes for my misunderstanding and breaking the session rules and visiting all club venues before testing positive COVID. Honestly, what an absolute wild ad. This says here, a British DJ who triggered the New Zealand's first Omicron scare after breaking the COVID isolation rule will not be prosecuted for the time being or for his say. The Ministry of Health does not plan to refer to the case of the police. The Ministry said that in a statement adding that it needs to balance the, the difference, sorry, the deterrence effect from any potential prosecution with enabling an environment that does not discourage future ease um, from assisting the public health response or COVID-19 and all that stuff means. Robert Efferidge, known as DJ Dimension, arrived in New Zealand on the 60th of December, spent seven days in one of the country's managed isolation quarantine MIQ facilities where he returned three negative COVID test results. After leaving MIQ, he was required to spend three days in home isolation but did not wait to receive a negative test on day nine, also required before entering the community. So, Again, this just shows the guys are wallad, right? Because don't get me wrong, these New Zealand rules and how they're going about things are pretty draconian. They're pretty excessive. But again, that's how they're dealing with stuff. And so far, it's worked for them. It's a bit annoying, but so far it's worked, right? It's worked to some very degree. But he already done most of it, right? He already stayed in that awful facility that looks a little bit like a gulag, right? But again, it's not. It's pretty comfortable. People seem to be enjoying it. It's not big of an issue. They don't seem to mind. Fair enough. People, you know, if, if people in Australia and New Zealand don't seem to mind it, then let them enjoy themselves, knock themselves out. He does all the hard thing first. And then when it comes to the final bit, you have to spend three days at home again. Imagine the climate in New Zealand. Imagine how lovely it is there. The natural fresh produce that you get to eat, um, fruit, you know, vegetables, whatever, right? It's, it must be great to be in a country like that where you can fucking eat an absolutely ripe, amazing mango, gigantic avocados, get your mind right, get a bit of vitamin D, just to stay indoors for a couple of days. Not that big of a deal. Three days at max. He doesn't do that. Waits and goes, right? Um to play what? EDM or whatever his fuck he's playing, right? And somehow that music is whatever. <laughs> First of all, he's leaving wherever he lives, right? To travel, however many hours it is to go to New Zealand, 16 hours to go and DJ somewhere, right? So clearly he either needs the money or EDM is that important to him that he feels like he has to go and play this gig. Like the fans need to see, need to hear me and see me play this fucking remix or this Tiger record or whatnot, right? Whatever nonsense they're going to play. If that's the case, make sure you're healthy enough to play in front of these people. Why would you just break the quarantine rules and then put the entire community you're going to play in front of that you supposedly love, right? Because these people are the ones I always talk, oh, I love you guys so much, man. You guys are my biggest, you know, those kind of people that give out those empty platitudes because they're getting paid and because they got all the sponsors coming out of their ass. But, you know, it's not necessarily coming from a real place because when it comes to looking after that said community and making sure they're not in any kind of, um, you know, they don't have any kind of... Um, they're not in any kind of danger in terms of catching COVID, you don't help them out by just staying indoors and making sure you go through the entire quarantine deal. Like I said, he if he would have broke the first one, I would have got it. Nine day wait in those kind of facilities must be excruciating. In regards of how great the weather is, in regards of how easy they make it and comfortable or whatnot. It must be hard. But that's not what they that's not why he failed. He failed on this on at at the kind of the final hurdle. He suddenly decided, nah, it's not worth it. It's like, oh my God. Um 
what is it, da, 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 uh, Efridge, who had been due to play at the Riven and Alps Festival near the Wanaka last week, apologized to those who have um, inadvertently put at risk as a result of my misunderstanding. I realize the gravity of the situation. I'm deeply regretful of those who have been impactful. No, no, no you didn't. No, you haven't. In an earlier statement, he said, after completing my 10-day isolation and of understanding that I had already completed my quarantine, I entered the community to knock, to shock and the enormous concern. I especially received a positive test on day 12, two days after my isolation period had been ended his case triggered outrage in new zealand has frequently been praised of the pandemic response we've only recently been lifted restrictions in auckland is the biggest center after the delta outbreak despite identifying dozens of close contacts the ministry said on monday that none have so far protested positive the virus covid cases are currently trending towards downwards in new zealand with just 27 community cases announced on monday and 24 at the border so i get it right they're an island they have to be a little bit more strict with how they go about things because if not people are going to run through that island and basically set on fire and leave and they're gonna have to pick up all the pieces but again a dj traveling 16 hours or so have a have a thousands of miles that is to go and dj in new zealand and then to decide to break the quarantine rules is just peak business techno you know delusions of grandeur entitlement and un, you know unwillingness to be self-aware or to just kind of like <laughs> operate in a world that like everyone else is operating on that teachers have been going through obviously like i've seen it seems like so far what we've seen we've seen covid has broken the brains of stand-up comedians who generally do think that they're entitled to be able to perform for people despite the world being on fire they did everything in their power to perform if it was in a garage on top of a car park for them they did, there was no such thing as a time off there was no such thing as a break it didn't exist it, oh it's too long however long it was you got certain people bragging about the fact that they were able to go and tour different places during the pandemic which is fucking crazy to think of because you know most of these people don't you know most of these people most people don't care about what they're doing anyway so to, to, for them to expect people to actually care during the pandemic is insane and it's happening with DJs. DJs for some way of, for some reason, like again, think of all the musicians in the music industry. Think of everyone that works within the music industry who claims a salary, who basically, maybe salary is dependent on people going to shows. Think of bands, right? Bands can't play live streams, right? It doesn't necessarily work the same as DJ. You've got to still get a studio, it's got a lot of money, you've got transport equipment. But DJ can basically travel solo everywhere and plug and play in most places. But for whatever reason, DJs felt like they had more of a right to claim a career and to rescue it or to fight for it or to play, this, despite the world being on fire, then bans it. And they continue to do so. Some of them decided to move you know, temporarily to different countries where the rules were a bit more lax, just so they can go and play. I saw people going to fucking Tanzania and shit, like lighting that country up on fire, Colombia, Mexico, Brazil, like regardless of what was going any country that was loose and lax with their rules of COVID or had leadership that probably was a little bit anti vaxxery, all right? They they suddenly run towards and most of these guys also let's say the irony of this, most of them were also vac vaccinated because of the countries that they were from probably required them to do so but then they went there lit the country on fire let people organize in big groups and just left with no regard but this one is just heinous the lad already completed the hardest part of the fucking isolation just stay in your fucking room play a bit of whatever and then leave do you know what I mean it's not that big of a deal but you know the edm vibes were just calling it was too much for him to stay and then he just continued moving on and you know essentially you know, I, you know, inadvertently, he could have led to the deaths of thousands of people. <laughs> oh, mate, just because he went to play, press Q and pause on a couple of tunes here and there. Like, these people are absolutely insane, man, legitimately. I think some guy I follow on social media made an article. I need to read it, basically saying, let's end I DJ idolatry. And I think I have to agree with the whole, with the oh, with what is kind of titled as, do you know what I mean? I'm not sure what the contents of the essay is, but DJ idolatry definitely needs to end because these fucking guys and girls, man, like they've been fucking horrible to follow during social media during the pandemic don't get me wrong i didn't follow most of them anyway but just to see hear and see what they're talking about second to third hand has been truly truly embarrassing and extremely cringe to kind of witness um with my bare eyes i'm not going to lie i'm not going to